Okay, we're in a very small um, granny flat and I just want to give you a quick demonstration on how to test. I've been asked to make a testing video and I could show you a panel where everything's bogus or I could show you a real installation. And this is a small granny flat so we'll be able to test this very quickly. The technique that I'm going to show you is not a conventional technique, it's not out of 3017, but it's fast, it's practical, and that's what matters. We've got a protected lighting circuit, we've got a protected power circuit, another protected power circuit. Uh, it looks like an unprotected uh, cable for the uh, wall oven and cooktop, that's what they did in the old days, that wasn't a problem. Uh, now they're all protected, of course. And we've got a main switch. So I'm going to start by turning off the main switch and turning off that. Now the only thing that should be connected is the earths and the neutral for the stove. Let's start by doing an earth continuity test. Now I'm not even going to open up the board. My theory is that the earth for the stove will be separate to the earth on the uh, power circuit, separate to the earth on the light circuit and uh, well, the only place they all join together is at the earth link. So if I can demonstrate an earth between two different circuits, then effectively I know that all the earths are okay. I'm not gonna to get too concerned about making sure the impedance of the earth is really low because this is a small installation. It's not gonna be high. If I've got a circuit, it's going to be great. So let's have a look. All I'm going to do is take an extension lead plug it into a socket. I'm going to take the other end of the socket, poke a pin into the earth, and I'm going to take the finest quality meter I could find, cost me 12 bucks on eBay, and I'm going to do an earth continuity test. So I know that I'm connected to that outlet. First, I'm going to measure the resistance of my extension lead. So one side of the outlet to the other, 1.2 ohms. Let's go to another outlet, 1.6. So that'll be 1.5, 0.3 ohms between this outlet and that outlet. Let's pick another one. 1.7, that's fine. Check the other side, 1.6, that's fine. 1.9, that's fine. While I'm here, notice that the numbers are jumping around a lot. That's one of the things that I hate about analog meters, but that's okay. One thing I'd like to mention is that Ohm meters never read lower than the value. So if you've got a meter that's jumping around and you can't settle on a number, the lowest number you see, that's the correct one. 2.12, I'm happy with that. 1 1 1.9, 1.8, 1.8, 1.9, 1.9, 1.8, 1.7, 1.8, 1.7. 1 Remember, all of those measurements are around about the 1.8 to 2.2 mark. And that's fine because when we measured the resistance of the lead in the first place, it was 1.4, so we can subtract that from our value and that's what the real reading on our meter was. Stove circuit is a little high, but still within limits. Outside light, doesn't appear to have an earth. Outside outlet, 2.2, that's fine. And water, don't appear to have an earth on the water pipe. Let's check that out. No earth on the water pipe. We have no bomb to the water pipe. Okay, so it looks like we have no earth on the outside outlet, no earth on the outside light, no earth to the water bond, and I can't find an earth stake. Perhaps I will have to open up the board. Okay, now we'll do an IR test. I've changed my mind about not opening up the board because my plan was to use the water bond as my reference for my IR meter and do it at the outside outlet, but that plan's been thwarted. I need to repair that earth bond before I go any further. But I'm not about repairing the earth bond right now. I'll do that later. I just want to show you an IR test. So now that we've opened up the board, we discover that even though this is a granny flat, there is no MEN link. There is a separate earth coming from supply, which is fine. I guess they probably should have bonded the uh, water pipe. So, because our MEN link is back at the main board, 
we're going to have to separate either the earth or the neutrals so that our earths are not connected to the neutrals. So we'll start with that. So the main switch is off. We'll turn on all of the breakers attached to the earth. Set our IR meter on 500 volts. Push the test button. Now if I want to know which end of the scale is which, short circuit, open circuit. Now there is a concern doing an IR test about putting 500 volts across our loads. So one simple way to fix that is just take your test lamps, plug them into an outlet between active and neutral. If I have test lamps between active and neutral, it's impossible to have 500 volts across active and neutral because the IR meter is incapable of delivering that kind of voltage. I've effectively connected active to neutral via my test lens. Now I can connect to my earth. IR test is on 500 volts. The button is pressed, short circuit, open circuit, onto the neutral. And we have a reading which is acceptable. Now you'll find because I've got those test lamps plugged in, the reading to the active will be exactly the same. I'm above one, uh, one meg, and there's my connection to the active. Because the active is effectively connected to the neutral, it's the same reading. So what I'm reading is 20 meg, that's fine. Now although I've done my IR test, I do have a little bit of a problem because I might still have one of my conductors with a low connection to that water bond and or the outside outlet, so I'll need to investigate that later. Now I've made up these little plugs and all I've got is a 20 ohm resistor between the neutral pin and the earth pin and a 25 ohm resistor between the active pin and the earth pin. I have another plug exactly the same with a 10 and a 15. The idea is 10 starts with 1, that'll be circuit number 1, and the 5, the 15, indicates that it is the active for circuit number one. Leave the switch on. We'll turn the breakers off. Then every circuit should be separate. So all of the outlets on circuit number one will have 10 on the neutral to earth and 15 on the active to earth. 10, neutral to earth, 15, active to earth. 10, neutral to earth, 15, active to earth. And the 10 disappears when you turn the switch off. 10, 15, and it disappears. 15, and it disappears. You still have the 10. 10, 15. On this outlet, I have open circuit neutral to earth, open circuit active to earth. That's because this is on a different circuit to the other outlet. So I can take out my other plug, which is 25 and 20, and I should see 25 on the active and 20 on the neutral. 20 on the neutral, that tells me that it's the same circuit as that other outlet and 25 on the active, which disappears. 20 on the neutral, open circuit, 25 on the active. 25, 20. It seems a little bit high. It's probably a high resistance joint just in the outlet because things don't get plugged into it very often. That may be the problem with the outside as well. 10, 16, 10. So that tells me that this is on the same circuit as the first one we did, and not on the same circuit as the kitchen, which is a good thing. You don't want the laundry on the same circuit as the kitchen. 10, 15, 10. See how meters jumping around? It's just a poor connection. Still working though. It tells me it's on the same circuit as the laundry. And 15. 10. And open circuit. 15. 10 on the neutral. 15 on the active. 10 on the neutral. Open circuit. 15 on the active. 10 on the neutral. 15 on the active, 10 on the neutral, that's just a poor connection, that'll be 15 on the active, 
15 on the active, 10 on the neutral. 10 on the neutral, we're down to 21. Not a great reading, probably a high res, it's just poor connections of the meter. 10 on the neutral, I saw it go to 19, so it's rough. 10 on the neutral, 15 on the active. 10 on the neutral, 15 on the active, and it's switched. Pick up the earth. Nothing. Now I'm going to go active to neutral. Nothing active to neutral. That's a good indication this outlet doesn't work. Oh, well, that's good because it doesn't have a nurse. 15 for the active. 10 for the neutral, perfect. Okay, so we've discovered that all of the outlets inside the premises are okay uh, because we had an earth at every outlet and the earth was effective. We had 15 ohms between neutral and earth on the outlet, some of the outlets, the ones in the laundry and in the bedroom. And we had 20 and 25 in the kitchen and in the main living area. Outside, we had 10 and 15. The two circuits are reasonably well balanced. The neutrals are where the neutrals should be. Actives are where the active should be. I'm not going to do a polarity test on the oven because I just can't be asked to pull anything out. Basically, it should be fine. Just to finish up, you'll notice that all of those tests, there was a lot of fucking around with the uh, meter and trying to get it to read right. This is the problem with digital meters. They're all slow and they never function correctly. Your IR meter, on the other hand, also has a low ohms range. So if we put this on 50 ohms, I'll just do a couple of outlets to show you how effective this little unit is. Step one, zero the meter. We have our meter zeroed. This one has 20 and 25. Neutral to earth, 20 ohms. Active to earth, open circuit, operate the switch. 25 ohms. Very nice. The laundry, this is one we had trouble with. Earth to neutral, 10 ohms. Earth to active, 15 ohms. Showing just over. Earth to neutral, 10 ohms. Earth to active, 15 ohms. Beautiful. This meter is much faster than a digital and you're not sitting there waiting for that result to come up and wrestling with your leads.